First News with Keeler in the morning on WIBX and WIBX950.com. The next thing is Professor Alan Sachs, who's on the line right now. Professor, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. We are always uh, excited to speak with you from the University of Texas at Arlington. How are you, sir? Is Utica in the northern part of New York? Uh, right in like the center the of the state. In the center. Mm-hmm. Upstate. I wasn't New- sure exactly where it was. A lot of people think New York. They automatically think the city, but uh, they forget well, there's a whole right. other You're state right. attack. And then, <laughs> the, and then from the central part of New York, uh, north, it's a different world. It is. Well, actually, is you get up world. to what you know, Westchester County and, and further up, uh, it, it changes dramatically as well. It really does. I, I, I like the change a lot. Yeah, we get the change of seasons here, which is nice. And, uh, and we have and the, the Adirondack change Mountains. Politics. Yeah, New York City also, though, gets the change of seasons. That's true, too, yeah. So what's going on, Professor? How are we? Uh, how was your Independence weekend? Well, it was, it was wild here. Uh, Texas, uh, Fort Worth, and Dallas. I'm, I live right between Fort Worth and Dallas. And they're having a shootout with Chicago. Fourteen people were shot yesterday. I'm laughing about it, but it's not any fun. Fourteen people were shot in Fort Worth yesterday. Only one was killed. Yeah, we're seeing uh, violence across the country here in our small city of Utica. Two homicides and a third shooting that has uh, an individual in critical condition uh, post surgery. It's even in Utica. That's even right. in Utica. Yep, and uh, tw- you know uh, several in New York City and all across the country. It's just terrible. But uh, the well, reason we're, we're we're in competition with Chicago in the Dallas Fort Worth area. We've just got to start shooting better. The um, the uh, Democrats, uh, this is the reason we're having you on, are blasting the Supreme Court, and they renew calls for that court packing uh, methodology or, or the threat of it. Uh, what's the latest ruling that has uh, Democrats up in arms? It's probably the um, uh, uh, case in uh, Arizona where they upheld Arizona's attempt to make, and, and it's right, to make voting uh, more real, more uh, in, in integrity. And it all goes back to that presidential election of a few months ago where a lot of people said something smells fishy here. And I think it did, but without rehashing that, a lot of states are now saying, including Texas, we've got to shore up our elections and make it uh, more real and a matter of integrity. And they're trying to do it. Evidently, the Democrats don't like that. The Democrats want to make sure that the Democrats win every election. Well, uh, Arizona wouldn't go in that way. And so that's what the Democrats don't like. So they want to expand the Supreme Court. A terrible idea. Another Democratic president wanted to do that in 1937, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. But interestingly, the history books credit the legislature, which was also Democratic at the time, of not giving him what President Roosevelt wanted. It's considered a a major heroic act that they went against President Roosevelt and did not give him what he wanted. I hope that this Democratic Senate will do the same thing. But with Senator Schumer in control, it's difficult to know. All right, Professor uh, Sachs, let me ask you a couple of things. One being, what was the ruling in Arizona? And and, uh, you make it sound like Republicans are the only ones who want to shore. Republicans want to shore up elections, but Democrats are willing to have uh, the the integrity questioned. But if there's if there's a question as to the integrity of a race, it could go either way. It doesn't it doesn't always favor Democrats, right? I mean, Republicans that, can get in and that, do that, that. And and by the way, in Arizona, what they did among other things is to prohibit ballot harvesting. For people that don't know ballot harvesting, it's where somebody can walk into a nursing home or a big facility where people have voted, collect all the ballots, and uh, and and return them. Right. So you have a situation where you have elderly people who can't get to the polling location. That's right. And and then one person takes on the role, uh, and it's not it, it's it's not intended to be a suspicious thing. But what happens is you you have one person who now has 150, 200 votes in their car, right? And, yeah, and, exactly. Right. So, and and that and person's been, not a and that person's not. And there have been some not, elections, and it sounds crazy, but one of them was in um, 
Minnesota when uh, I think it was um, who was the individual who used to be on Saturday Night Live and uh, all of a sudden Al he comes Franken. up with a, a bucket full of ballots in the back of his car. That's what they want to stop. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think Al Franken is who he's referring to. Al Franken, And, you right. know, Professor Sachs, there were, um, uh, I know there were situations in the New York City mayoral race, even in the Democrat primary, where... All, all of a sudden they find 135,000 new ballots. You know, the uh, the big uh, Eric Adams, who uh, was a front runner uh, in the race, uh, he is a Democrat, he is a liberal, and he's not, uh, he's not... Well, he's not well liked by a lot of the people that are, uh, you know, voting in New York City, or at least the people who are in the elites of New York City are not really happy with Eric Adams. But um, you know, again, there's no proof of it. But I know that there are inconsistencies in that race here in Oneida County. We had, uh, I won't say inconsistencies, but uh, somewhat of a debacle in the sense that it took us how many months to determine our uh, congressional representatives. So. Um, whether it be for reasons of fraud or inconsistencies or what, I definitely think that uh, voting uh, reforms have to happen or at least things have to get to the bottom of it. So what was the ruling in Arizona? In Arizona, they said no ballot harvesting, and they want to make their elections a lot more uh, of, of, of integrity, and I think they're right. Also, one thing that's open to terrible abuse is mail-in ballots, and I think they probably had some restrictions on that as well. The Republicans cried foul that, oh, you're going to eliminate a lot of minority voters, and that is not true. But that's what they were yelling about. The Democrats, the Democrats are, 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 you're saying, cried foul. Yeah, I believe that's what he. I believe that's what he meant. Well, Professor, uh, we always appreciate you taking the time. Do you have anything else for the well, professor? Well, yeah, I, I, let me ask you this. Is, is this something that uh, Joe Biden could do via executive order? I don't believe it is. Or no, would he, he have to pass it to no, the No, he states? could not. Yeah. It, it, it would definitely take a legislature to expand the Supreme Court. And by the way, in the Constitution, it says nothing at all about the number of people on the court. So the legislature can do it. The Congress can do it uh, if they want to. I would suggest not to go in that direction. So they would not need to amend the Constitution. They can decide it's 13, it's 25, Correct. whatever it is. It wouldn't exactly. have to be passed multiple terms. They could do it. And you can see the problems in that. Sure. And it would be terrible. Then the Republicans can come in and say, well, heck, the Democrats did it. We'll do it, too. I know. You're going to have this escalating court where it's That's right. we're going to swing it one way, swing it this way, swing it another way. And unfortunately, you know, when we're talking about matters of the law, it shouldn't be that way. The law should be the law and politics right. should be on the side. Exactly. So. Well, Professor Sachs, we appreciate your time this morning. I hope you have a great day. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it very much. All right. That's uh, Professor Alan Sachs from the uh, University of Texas at Arlington. That's and correct. And we talk to him every couple of weeks. Interesting guy. He's yes. a, he's pro he's a pro Trump guy. Big time. Hundred percent. It's time for another season of the Palmetto Porch, an original podcast from Discover South Carolina. I'm Devin Whitmire. Join me as I get to the heart of what makes South Carolina such a great place to visit by speaking to the locals who make it so special. Premiering December 5th, find the Palmetto Porch wherever you get your podcasts. And for more information about our show, visit scpalmettoporch.com.